The 19th century and the early 20th century were an era of extensive trade and exchanges between America, Europe, and the Middle East and the Eastern Mediterranean. The goods going from east to west went through port cities, which were European outposts, wealthy cosmopolitan centers. One of those ports was Smyrna. So it was a city that was, that was made a lot of money, it had a lot of fun, it was also a cultural center. It had um, many newspapers, publishing houses, um, and uh, theaters, uh, many cinemas, and so forth. Uh, a lot of the wealth and uh, the impressive part of Smyrna was, was really mostly the, the so-called waterfront or the quay. And there was a long quay that stretched from the so-called point in the north of the city uh, southward toward the commercial district. And along this uh, quay were hotels, restaurants, cafes, private clubs. A visitor arriving at the port of Smyrna would have realized immediately that they were, had landed in a place of prosperity and commerce. Smyrna had a very impressive two-mile-long seafront, which was a string of two, three, and four-story buildings designed by European architects, which housed banks, insurance companies, the houses of the wealthy merchants, the consulates, hotels, and other buildings which showed the wealth of the city. Smyrna was legendary for its wealth, but also the entertainment one could find in the city. Smyrna worked hard, but Smyrna partied hard as well. One could start one's evening uh, sipping a drink in one of the bars on the seafront, then maybe go to a restaurant, attend a European opera company's performance, and then end the night dancing away at one of the nightclubs. If F. Scott Fitzgerald had seen Smyrna, it would be very likely that he could have set the great Gatsby in Smyrna and not Long Island. Smyrna on the coast of Western Asia Minor is a beautiful harbor city. As ships would sail into the city, into the harbor there, you would come into this beautiful, almost perfect half moon bay and they would come into this in the, these long uh, piers where they would dock and actually each of the European powers and many of the commercial enterprises had their own docks there. And you would come into this city of beautiful houses, of beautiful buildings, of consulates, of beautiful marble as one would sail in or come in on a steamship uh, into the harbor. And there, there's this remarkable, beautiful city um, cosmopolitan city, a city of diversity, a city of cultural vi vibrancy um, and political and economic and commercial vibrancy. This changes overnight, unfortunately, in the late summer of 1922. If one went beyond the waterfront, one would have realized that the city is not only a cosmopolitan European center, but an Ottoman city. Ottoman cities traditionally were divided into ethnic quarters, and that was the case with Smyrna. So be behind the seafront, if one started to their walk from the southern part of the city, where, which was hilly on the side of a mountain, that's where they would have found the narrow winding streets of the Turkish neighborhood. The Muslim inhabitants of Smyrna lived in the southern part of the city. A little bit further on to the north was the Jewish, small Jewish community, uh, which the neighborhood abutted the uh, Turkish neighborhood. Beyond that, going walking further north, one would have entered a more wealthy neighborhood, which would have been the Armenian neighborhood. And just above the Armenian neighborhood was the very large Greek neighborhood, the Greek quarter of the city. The Greeks and the Turks were the largest ethnic groups in Smyrna.